Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be going over a bunch of settings that I use within what is called an environment resource. I realized that I hadn't gone over it when a comment actually brought it up. So I'm going to step through all of the environment resource options. And I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to kind of give you a breakdown of what each one of them do and how I have them set up and why I have them set up within this project. And then in a later video at some point, I'll go over different possible presets like how to do it as a winter environment or an autumn environment or something like that. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. So first off, we're going to go through background. So background is what the actual color is rendered when you just look at the sky. If we turn it to unshaded and turn to environment, you can see the sky is just that color that I set. Mind you, there is volumetric fog involved, but for the time being, that's all you really need to know is that it's the background. I could use a sky in this case and use a procedural sky material, but for this purpose, I ended up just using a custom color as it still gets essentially the same basic result, specifically right here in the entrance, but it doesn't have the performance cost of the sky. Now, if we switch back to normal, we also have the ambient light. In my particular case, because I'm using SDFGI, it doesn't really have any sort of impact, even if you change it to anything and up the energy nothing happens so i have mine disabled but under normal circumstances it would be the ambient light that is always everywhere on every object though sdfgi kind of replaces that the reflected light is the background specifically in reflections. Now, as we're not currently using reflections in here, it doesn't really matter, but under normal circumstances, I would default that to whatever the background light is. Now, the tone map is very interesting. So the tone map, I default to Reinhardt. There are several different options and aces or filmic are kind of the standard go-to for quality. I did go to Reinhardt specifically for the brightness, though I may actually swap it out for filmic later on. It was a little bit dark in the world before then and I'm not sure which one I'll end up going with. We're going to leave it on the Reinhardt for the time being, though. And all this really does is kind of run the entire video feed through a filter. And you can actually look this up because film uses this quite liberally in movies and things like that. Now, moving on, going to SSR. This is screen space reflections. If we slow down the camera a little bit and zoom in down here onto the pistol, you can actually see if I turn it on, you can see a slight skin tone right there. And it just kind of gives you basic reflections based off of the environment. And it's only screen space. So if you rotate the camera, it will disappear at the edges because it doesn't know what's beyond the screen. Now, I don't typically use this. The reason for it is that in debugging, I found that it took about one and a half percent of my GPU's performance. The only place it was really noticeable was either there on the revolver or right here in the rails, and it's not excessively noticeable. So for the time being, I'm going to leave this off. I may turn it on later if I have a really strong reason to do so. You still have great lighting even without it. Now, moving on to SSAO, this is screen space ambient occlusion. And and if I go right here, you can see it most effectively. And you see how between two objects, the shadows are darker. And this can be excellent for really defining the borders of objects. It really does break down what the light should look like in real life, how corners of rooms tend to be darker because the light bounces around and doesn't get into those corners as effectively. Now, the problem I actually ended up running into is I want it to define the edges of objects, but in direct sunlight or any light for that matter, it really just does disappear in Godot. There is no representation of it inside of light and the light effect variable doesn't seem to really have any effect. So for the time being, I've disabled it because the only place it would be noticeable is right in this blue area. And I ended up deciding that the cost of seeing it here was not worth the performance because it is about 1.6% of my GPU's cost. Now, if I go down here to SSIL, so SSIL and SDFGI kind of work hand in hand. So SDFGI is our global illumination setup. So if we turn that off, you'll see everything is very, very black wherever there isn't directly a light. And if we turn that back on, you can see how the light kind of cascades down from the hole above. And this can result in some very beautiful lighting. Now, there's a bunch of different options here. I'm not going to go into all of them. What I would suggest is keep the cascades as low as possible while still keeping the quality up. If you turn this down to about four, you can see in my scene, it really does not work as the terrain is kind of clipping through the world. So it thinks that there's sky down there. And as a result, it just doesn't work out. So I've turned that on to eight. 
to get that detail up so that it doesn't do so but under normal circumstances i would not turn it to eight now the minimum cell size is really the bar of quality but be aware that there are some settings in the project settings here for global illumination specifically having to do with the sdfgi in a open world very heavy use of day night cycles I actually found that lowering the frames to update lights was actually kind of required but for the time being this is just the settings that we have and the results aren't half bad so we're going to leave that where it is now ssil on the other hand works in tandem with sdfgi and if i turn it off you can see an ever so slight bump in quality when it's on and what it does is it's essentially like sdfgi but just on the screen space much like the reflections it only affects the things that you can see and specifically it really helps with some of the finer details so if i turn it on and off right here you can see how the light from the ground is bouncing up onto the bottoms of those rocks and this area right here is the actual sdfgi working now obviously it's much finer control than the sdfgi and as a result it can make the environment look much prettier so i do typically leave it on now down below that you have glow which is your pretty much your box standard bloom if we switch it to additive we can see something that's a little bit more like the original oblivion or something like that where the bloom is very very noticeable for the time being i have mine set to soft light which makes the bloom much less noticeable and a bit more gentle i may end up changing it up later on there's a lot of different options here and really it is just whatever looks best for you i actually very much like glow but ironically everyone always criticizes it as being the standard go-to to try and make a game look better but it does genuinely help quite a lot so if i leave that off we can go on to fog now fog and volumetric fog are in my opinion kind of interchangeable a volumetric fog obviously looks excellent you can see the fog in the in the light here now if we turn that off it, everything in the whole world looks much flatter now you can imitate that to some degree with fog and you'll see i've got it set up here to be a, a little bit more noticeable it's a bit more old school but it does get the job done especially if your game is not meant for photorealistic and it also happens to be way higher performance so if you're having performance issues the volumetric fog can really cut down your performance and so you might want to try turning that off but for me i just had to have it i can't i can't make that look the way it does right now without it and it just looks beautiful now under the adjustments you can just go ahead and enable that i always use adjustments because they are almost entirely free and you have a lot of options here you can turn up the brightness you can turn up the saturation you can also control the color correction now the color correction is where i'm getting a lot of my mood if i go ahead and delete this you'll notice how everything is much more brown and the reason for that is that this gradient is mapped to the light to dark of the actual scene so if i change this you can see how the world changes along with it and if i close up those bands we can actually Actually manipulate how the world is rendered now for the time being obviously this is not ideal but right now if the closer to grayscale you get here the closer to base reality you get so if I just remove color correction you can see this is what the actual lighting and the colorations of the world look like by implementing a gradient, I can manipulate those colors. So say if I wanted the blacks in the environment to not be black anymore, I wanted them to be brown or something like that, and I wanted it all to be sepia tone, I could just go ahead and manipulate that like this and get the job done. Now, obviously this isn't exactly what I would want. I'd probably want something more like this but by using color correction you can really manipulate the feel of the world and i'd highly suggest to use this in pretty much every project as it's pretty much no performance unless you do some pretty cool stuff like what i've got right here so that's pretty much it for the environment like i said not super complicated video just kind of going over the basics i'd highly recommend you dig in see what you like see what you don't like play around with it enjoy yourselves i may do a video after this whole fps horror series that is specifically on making different environments and swapping between them that might come later but for the time being this is all we're going to be able to achieve thank you all for watching and i hope you all enjoyed this special episode and we'll see you all back next week for the normal episode